look at these fine folks. How are we all doing today? Hello, hello, hello. Oh, my camera's even almost right for the first time. Guys, we're figuring it out. We're professionals here. <laughs> I think I do want to configure. Yeah, that's actually much better. There we are. So how are we doing, guys? It's Saturday. We get to chill out. We get to enjoy some StarCraft. Like, what could go wrong? Last night, I grilled out. And we had a fire. Oh, it's been a good weekend so far, friends. I got a really good gig tonight where I get free dinner. Uh, I don't have detection, so I'm going to hope... I'm going to pretend that they don't exist because I don't have detection. And if I can't see them, they can't see me. But you know what sent you here, Dada? We can start with your NSL 6 finals. <laughs> Congratulations. Welcome to the spotlight. Uh... Oh boy, I can't wait. Well, you're going to have to wait a minute because I have to get it set up. Uh, I need to go into studio mode and make sure that it's all set up over here. There we go. There we go. <laughs> if I don't hear it, it's not attacking. Guys, if my drones were dying, I would hear it, right? <laughs> oh, I love this game. Well, other, either that or there's another person going by Dada who played in the finals. And, uh, well, to say that I'd be impressed would be a little bit of an understatement. If we had another Dada make it all the way to the finals of NSL 6, and I don't remember who they are, I'd be a little impressed. Um, I also don't have, like, the actual... Um, NSL overlay, so we're just kind of bumming it. <laughs> there we are. Yeah, it's close enough. Yeah, you could. You could. Or I can use the CPL one. Because <laughs> then I don't have to actually like, go through and change all of the settings and adding it to multiple scenes. <laughs> It's fine, it's fine. No one will notice. Guys, nobody will notice, all right? <laughs> I probably should save that. Yeah, I'll just open that in a new tab, and there we are. Because, I mean, I'll need that soon anyway, because, guys, NSL 7 is almost upon us. God, drafts coming up here in the next couple weeks. Big stretches. Oh, okay. Let's get right into some StarCraft, friends. We've got several finals to get through today because eh, I got nothing to do but for the next five hours. So we're going to crank out some StarCraft and eh, it's going to be a good day. All right. Spawning here in the top left hand side of lights out with the orange drones. Give it up for Dada. Top right hand side with the pink SCVs. Give it up for Gabagoon. Also, I don't know why I'm available. I'm never set to available. It must have changed when I logged back in because I had to switch my account for StarCraft 2 the other day. <coughs> Doesn't matter, guys. We got Gabagoon, and we've got Dada. And you know what? I think it's going to be fun. It's TVZ. Honestly, slowly becoming my best matchup. I've learned to just build Ultralists, and I win. 
And so somehow this is starting to outpace my um, ZVP, which was always my best matchup because <laughs> Hydra go Burr. Maybe I'm just getting good at the game. Hmm. I don't know if I like that thought very much. <laughs> Well, let's see what we got here. These guys, yeah, they're both of them fun players. Uh, uh, they're both really cool people. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I actually, both of these guys are very fun players. They're very cool people to talk to as well. Obviously, Gabagoon is on our Little League team, and he's a beast. <laughs> he's Gabba good at the game. Mm, Dada is some Dutch dude. I don't know much about him. Eh. You know how they are over there. <laughs> Those Dutch people. I can't believe you're not going to be around when I'm over there, Dada. I, I, I can't believe this. I, I plan to come to the Netherlands to hang out, smoke way too much weed, have a few beers at 8 a.m., and this man's like, oh, I'll be in Japan. What the fuck? <laughs> you can't believe it. All right, very macro opener here. Hatch first. Pull and gas follow. First scout for both sides. Get out of here, drone. Oh, yeah, you're right. I'll hang out with the other Dada. No, you know what? I'll hang out with Eskia. We'll get kebabs. That's it. Me and him will get kebabs all morning. All right, SCB coming in here, stabbing drones. It's like London over here. <laughs> if I don't get a free kebab with Eskia, I'm asking for a refund on all the time I've spent watching his stream. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. I'd actually probably buy the kebabs for him. He's a cool dude. But he's not in this game right now. Maybe NSL 7. Maybe he'll make it. Oop. Are we going to eat the SCV or not? Well, there was a really cool opportunity there. If you shift and you move all your, um, you just move command all your lings around the SCV and then attack and they just all. Boom. Yeah, I mean, we've all gotten a little bit better since NSL 6. You gotta remember, for those of you who don't know, these games were played, um, uh, when was NSL 6 at this point? Six months ago, at least? Maybe even more? We're in April now. Yeah, NSL 6 would have been last summer. It's been like a year. Because six months ago was, um, Home Story Cup. That was in November. Uh, I guess... Yeah, it was a little bit before Home Story Cup, so that still wasn't. That was like CPL still, maybe. Man, time is weird. Siri knows exactly when the last um, NSL was. I'm sure. I don't even remember when breakfast was. All right, we got a spire on the way here. Third hatch in base. This SCV is going to... Thinking about coming back and looking. Nice little marine ball here. This is two racks in, into Academy. Scans coming on up here. <laughs> You're not a big memory user. Understandable. Also, Siri, I have to say, I had to seed the bracket for CSL. <laughs> and I was like, God, I remember why I hate doing this. <laughs> like it just clicked. I was like, oh, yeah. I hate doing this. I forgot. Oh, bye, SCV. How dare you steal those minerals? Theft will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law, which is death. By Zergling. Oh. All right. Bit of a move out here. We're going to have to drop two sunkins, ideally. Three if you're a little scared. We also had the Spire finishing here. Mutas are on the way. A little too poor to use this third hatch so far. 
scan goes down, sees this um, sunken, and goes, hmm. All right. I did my job. Now, the Giga Chad plays, wait for his scan, and then cancel him after the scan. So you can save a couple bucks. But you have to know for sure that he's going back, which generally Terrans do, but Terran players are about as predictable as, um, uh, what's something that's very unpredictable and kind of stupid to predict? Like the weather. Yeah. <laughs> All right, five mutas here, more on the way, plus one air weapon starting. Turrets are up. Oh, some turrets are up. Main's a little lacking, but the Marines are standing by just in case. Natural's looking good. Don't worry, Dada, I'm sure it's not much better nowadays. By the way, we don't have enough to one shot yet. We're one meter short. These meters are on break. Well, yeah, no, it's good. We got to finish our smokes first, you know? We told the boss we ain't work until we smoked. <laughs> All right. Here comes the big old marine push out here. Now you do want to be whittling this down with your mutas. Uh, a little bit of map pathing errors here. <laughs> Whittling them up getting stuck. Ooh, that overlord's absolutely toast. Oh, these four marines are free. Free marines. Double stimmed even. Yeah, you need to be trying to pick this off. Otherwise, they're just going to stim right through your sunkens. Man with gun, good unit. There's seriously only one fire there? This game sucks. Actual dog shit game. <laughs> we are taking the bottom left here. Gabagoon's like, you know what? Maybe I should check for that. Still a little scary to engage into it. All right, yep. He sees the base. There's two drones on this mineral line. There's a. Oh yeah, this is this is kind of Jover. Oh yeah. At this point, you just step through the sunken. You were just gauging how strong he would be here. He could overcommit to this. But he's also killed all the mutas, so any amount of commit's fine. Yeah. GG is called. And Gabagoon takes game. Number one. <laughs> ah, fucking Tasagi. Don't worry, we can absolutely blame Terran for that. It's 100% Terran. You need to be going. You know, there's nothing else to do. Nothing else matters more than StarCraft. Shame on you. <laughs> All right, let's get the scoreboard set up here. Got to practice my Muta Micro. Yeah, maybe you do. <laughs> but you know, we can always all get a little bit better, can't we? That's just the way life is. Ah, I hate these things. You know what? Let's just get right into game number two. Let's see if... D Let's watch Dada bring it back, right? You know, you let him take the first map, let him feel good, and then you proceed to win the rest of the series, right? I think... I think that's exactly how you should do it. You gotta make it interesting for the fans. Alright.
spawning here in the top right hand side with the orange drones give it up for Dada bottom left with the pink SCVs these guys are committed to their colors and you love to see it give it up for the Gabagoon all right game two now these are best of seven so minimum of four games maximum of seven the real question is when do you cheese because you absolutely should cheese at some point right like every every good series has a cheese in there somewhere especially if you're not entirely confident so the question is do you do it in game two or game three I feel like you can't wait until game four especially if you're losing consistently like yeah you got it game two or game three you got to do something silly here but I mean four player map this one's got a little bit this one's a little bit longer of a rush distance so mm, you could do like a nine pool speed on something like this but nah Dada is just gonna be the macro machine that he is now all he needs is just more more drones more drones means more stuff and he'll be fine all right let's see what are we gonna do Imp hatch pool gas 12 11 10 that's a classic yeah, this must be about a year ago because that's back when the 12, 11, 10 was still popular before you did more of like an 11 hatch. You like an 11, 11, 10 nowadays. So, yeah, this is definitely... These replays show their age a little bit. All right. We're going for the depot wall here so that way you can just hide your Marines behind it. And you can laugh at the Lings as you just gun them down. Just, ah, get out of here, Zerglings. Oh, he's ready to hug the drone. Uh, oh. Aw. Doesn't get in. It's one Rax right now. Is it going to be a quick CC? Yes, it is. So two Marines into CC here. We are just going to go for the economy. I mean, you get over here and you scout that it's hatch first. The layer's coming on up here. There's no lings out right now. One set will pop, but you also see a drone pop. So you go, oh, okay. He's building one set of links to keep back scouts and stuff. Get some information on the map, maybe. You send them, like, here and here. Just kind of see what move-outs happen and such. But yeah, you could just... All right, time to be greedy. All right. Oh, tries the body block. Does not successfully stop him, though. Layers most of the way done at this point. Second racks is down. Gas coming on up. Natural CC is almost done as well. Oh no, Mr. Mr. SCV. You got to keep running. Come on. All right. He sees this finish. I don't think he saw the spire go down, but he saw the drone moving. So you, you know exactly what he's doing. Unless, of course, you big brain it, and that's actually a Hydra Den, and you're going for a two hatch lurker bust. Now, that would be the Giga Chad play of the day. You drop this, and then you cancel it, and you're actually just going speedling all in. There's some of my games here. But at this point, we have already built more drones than we did last game. And that's a thumbs up in my book. Stim coming on up here. The medics coming to help. All right. The Overlord's gonna make it across. It's gonna hunker down up here on the rocks and just watch. Overlord's known for being perverts. They just want to sit up here on these pillars and watch. 
Uh, he wants a little more of a hands-on approach. Um, uh, what are you going to do? You can come down and grab an, uh, an STV or something? Calm down, bro. Yeah, look at this play. You move under it, and then you just... All these... Oh! 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 Get out of here. STV makes it through, baby. He's going to see the Mutas pop. Now, I mean, you can't ask for a better scout than seeing something. Like, seeing the Mutas finish. That's all you could ask for. And he gets it. What a Chad. All right, the long, long group of links here, along with the two clumps of mutas in the back. Where are you guys going? You gonna come over here and start a new area, new hive cluster? Got our dozen marines and change some medics. All right. Four mutas. Absolutely have to two shot a worker. Oh, I like that. You take the gas first. Not a bad idea. If you can get up to three gas super quick, you just go into fast hive. You play some crazy zerg. You know? There's always potential. I do love me some crazy Zerg. Yeah, at this point, it was still popular, so it's very possible to see it. All right. Terran's moving out here. He's ready to cause a problem. And Zerg doesn't want to deal with that. Zerg's like, I don't get paid enough to deal with this. So we're just going to avoid the problem. Oh, no. Oh no. With the two Sungids, we're back down to the amount of workers we had last game. Oh no, now we're at less workers. Dada, where's your drone button? Where's your drone button? 18 drones at eight minutes. Ooh. We can do it. You don't need drones, you just need more mutalists, guys. More mutas is more better. Bio Clumps moving out here to take some map control. The muters are at home. They're not harassing. They're not really getting any information. They're not slowing the bio down. Oh. Oh, no. That's a move command. Oh, no. Oh. I would have just GG'd right there. I would have been like, nah, this game. Terrible game. Just, we're done. This is where we uninstall. Oh, bye, Overlord. All right, we have some drones now. Look at that. Now we're up to a more respectable drone count. We have the Queen's Nest, so we can go hive here. We just need to not die right now. And honestly, that's easier said than done. Uh, we might, We might die here. This is why you need to clean up the bio ball while it's still on the map. Oh, they don't shoot. Oh my god, no, they don't shoot again. Reinforcing guns come on up here. Dada says GG. Gabagoon taking game number two. They can't keep getting away with it. Honestly, this is this is number one bullshit. <laughs> Guys, is Terran too good? Is are these the questions we're not asking? Is Terran too good? There we are.
All right, guys. Game number three. We're on a roll. We're not going to stop, guys. We have like four or five tiers of StarCraft to cast. And we're going to see how much we can get through today before I have to go. Or I die. <laughs> we'll see. I want to at least get through um, a couple of series here. A couple of best of sevens. That should take us a while. All right. Spawning here in the bottom, left-hand side, with the pink SCVs. Give it up for Gabagoon. Top right, the green drones. Give it up for Dada. Sandstorm, two-player map. This is it. This is where you nine pull speed and you just bully them. Because this is the map with the open bridges too. So your lings will just Alright. I understand why everyone hated the minerals here. Or the egg, depending on which version you played. But I think this bridge does need to be blocked off. Until the mid-game. If you had found a way to do it that didn't fuck up your entire army trying to leave your natural, it would have been a good map. Or a better map. The biggest issue is that because these are open in this version, it's such a short rush distance for early game, like something like an early game nine pool speed, right? Or, you know, Hydra Lurker Bust for um, ZVP. It's just. I think you genuinely need to have this blocked off until the mid game. But also in a way that where half your army isn't just kind of doing this. Bouncing, 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 bouncing. <laughs> you know? Otherwise, I, I always thought it was a cool map, you know? And then you have like six lurkers here and you're trying to get them out and they're just like bunching up right here. And you're like, no! Go the frick around! <laughs> Anyone who's played on this map knows the pain. All right. Hatch down, pool down. Gas is not down yet. Hmm. Huh. That's an odd spot for a drone. Are we watching my replays or Dada's? <laughs> I feel like he might have gotten some inspiration from me. All right, we got a full wall here with the CC. I think this is a gap, but don't quote me. Probably is a gap. But anytime I say there's a gap or a wall's link tight, they just, I'm wrong. So I've just refused to guess anymore. This game makes very little sense sometimes. All right. There it is. That cheeky third base. You'll love to see it. If we're pulling a map, this is it, baby. There we are. Look at this link control. As soon as I say it, these two links fall AFK. Oh, come on, boys. What are you doing? There we go. All right, link speed coming on up here. Bit of a supply block. Oh. Are we going to get a 1-1-1 one, one, one here? With an academy? Huh. This could be interesting. This definitely has potential here. Alright, Link's gonna come in here, see that there's some marines and go, alright. We're not gonna try and hop in there. Nope. Oh, the marines just... 
Want to go out and fight anyway? Oh. Oh. The Marines wanted a fight and they got a fight. And then they proceeded to win the fight. Oh, it's a lurker bust. It's a lurker bust. And with a hatchery over here? Let's get these boys working. We have a hatchery over here. You bring in some stuff over here, and he's like, oh, it's going to come up over here. And then a bunch of lurkers just walk down the ramp and burrow up, like, right in here. There's potential. It is a 1-1-1 one, one, one. into cloaked race. Or is he trying to do a Valkyrie build? I hope, I hope for Dada's sake, he's doing a Valk build. Oh, no, he shouldn't be. This is. He must. He scouted the Hydrodent. It must have been with a scan. Yeah. This one scanned and he saw the Hydrodent. So he's going vessel tank. Okay. The 111 actually might work out here real well because he's going to have vessels super quick. Yeah, he's got the forward turret and the bunkers. This is a shame. But there's still an advantage because we have the safety base here. I don't know why we're building Sunkins at it. Like, the whole point of a hidden base is that he doesn't know about it. You know? But such is life. All right. Our marine count's kind of low. Like our bio count in general is kind of low because we've invested in a factory. We're getting vessels. We just added on racks two and three. So the bio count's pretty low. We've got all this setup stuff here for like the fences and everything. We're getting all this tech. But genuinely, if we went now, like if our lurkers were hitting right now, it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of game over for Gabagoon. However, we're going to be hitting a little bit later because we're just now getting the lurkers and then they have to go across the map. He's not even going to go across the map. He's playing defensively, which is always the wrong choice. I play defensively against Terran and it's always the wrong choice. You want to be up in his face, just random bullshit, go. And then you hope that he dies. Because if he doesn't, he's just going to roll you over. Terran's power comes from numbers and siege tanks in the back line and these fancy things called vessels, which are kind of, kind of, kind of too good, right? So you want to be able to, I like being aggressive against Terran. I think it is a better way to play. Is what I'll say. All right, more hatcheries coming on up here. We're going straight into hive. That I love. Oh well, he's ready for lurkers now. Okay, is he ready for ultralists? What's he gonna do when like four ultras just run through and just start? Arf, arf. Well, this is awkward. Hey, hey, get. Could you not? Alright, that works. Got him, boys. This is where you Overlord drops. You drop right in the main. You just run two lurkers over here. Zoom, 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 zoom. Workers all explode. Terran in panic. And I mean, Dada's floating a bit of money, so we can afford to do something crazy like that. We're transferring drones out of this base, and that is maybe the worst idea. Because if these drones get caught, one, well, all right, one, if the drones get caught, you know, it's a problem. Two, we don't have nearly enough drones here to begin with. Yeah, and this marine tank push is just going to win the game. Because he doesn't have anything that'll break the tanks here. We got a defiler mound up. We don't have any snaky boys yet. 
We're getting the Ultralist Cavern. And that's cool and all, but once again, oh. Bye, Mr. Lurker. Yeah, like you put your tanks here and like here. And this is just going to be gone. Yeah. Oh, that tank is a, a little adventurous, but it works out in the end. Oh, they bounce right to the other side of the hatchery, and that's good for them. Yeah, things are disappearing as they spawn. Sheesh. That's unfortunate for our boy. Oh, bye, Defiler. All right, here come the space cows. Can they save this? Well, there's only plus one. Oh, well. Couldn't save that one. No upgrades, though. So we're still doing six damage a shot. Which is quite a bit. Especially the radiate. Oh, oh, just hug him. Just get over there and give him a hug. Ultra, what are you doing? You're bigger than him. Why are you running? There you go. Yeah, this base is undersaturated and underutilized, sadly. That poor Zergling. That Zergling finally understands what it's like to be in China in the late 80s. Casually enjoying a day at the square. Alright, at this point, Terran's like, why are you still in my game? Right? As he scans here, he sees the edge of creep. Well, it's, I should say it's visible to him. If he saw it or not, that I can't, I can't say that for certain. But it was, in fact, visible. Yeah, he's checking everywhere for all the bases. Another hatchery going down to the main. dot has got 4,000 resources to spend. The thing is, if he just gets a bunch of ultras, like, you just... If he spends his money in ultra ling, and, you know, an upgrade or two... Yeah, like that. Oh! Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Those irradiates were good. That was some beautiful irradiates, too. Just ba da up. That's some beautiful cloning. Oh. GG's. It's not looking good for our boy, I think. Yes. I'm not going to say for certain, but I don't think it's looking good for our boy. Alright guys, let's hop into game number four. Let's see if Dada can do the full on reverse sweep. What do we think? I think it's rough, but I would love to see him pull at least a map, you know? You never want a 4-0 in a best of seven. So I would love to see him pull at least one map. And well, this isn't exactly the worst map to do it on either. The top left hand side, the orange drones. We're on Neo Rush Hour. Give it up for Dada. In the center right, guys, just above 3 o'clock. Give it up for the Gabagoon. All right, guys, this is match point. If Gabagoon takes it, he takes it all. But Dada still got some fight in him. So I don't think it's over yet. We're gonna go for a wall, okay.
pool first. Oh, it is a nine pool. Come on, Dada. You can do it. Nine pool speed his ass. Let's go, Zerg. Let's go, Zerg. Let's go, Zerg. Come on. Nine pool speed versus a wall. A little tricky, but very doable still. You got to kind of like run in and try and get it around to the marine spawn. That way you can clap them real quick. Here come the lings. SCV is scouting the wrong base first. This is truly the best scenario for our Zerg. He's not going to get scouted first. His lings will have time to pop. As long as he sends his lings this way first. Because if he sends them down. Oh. No, because this is a gap, right? And I think this might be a gap. This is possibly a gap I need the handy document of what size everything is on what side there is a large series of images that tells you like oh well it's three pixels on this side and on this side it's 18 pixels and you're like what why what <laughs> alright gets here wrong base but it's too late because the lings were seen because they ran into Mr. SCB and it goes from bad to worse. Well, so what you gotta do is you're gonna have to sacrifice some boys. You just run in here and try and kill, like, attack, click these SCVs. Whichever one you can get the most surface area on, basically. You can also wait for speed. But, looks like it's done, so. going home is the wrong decision going home is always the wrong decision especially right now because you're going to see that all of his marines come to kill your overlord you're going to be like oh all right yeah and this is like if there was ever a time to send it it's now but we have to come all the way back and unfortunately this is just one of those decision making things where it's like should have made a different decision from the start but we didn't so Oh, this indecision is killing him. The less decisive you are. Yeah, it's not good. Whatever you're going to do in this game, you got to be decisive about it. If you are indecisive like this, going back and forth, back and forth, you're definitely going to miss any opportunity you had. All right, we're going to go for the lurker play again here. I do love to see it. I'm a big fan of the lurker. I think it's a great unit. One, all right, no, this is two X Academy. I can count. Yeah, and the era of Lings is officially over with this many Marines here. SCV is still in the wall. You're not going to be able to try and break into this. Sadly, I do think our window for the Lings at least is over. And with a nine pull speed, if you don't get damage, you are. Um, you're a bit behind. All right. Lurker aspect is coming. The hydras are coming. You want to get those hydras way out here. Oh, he's going to move out. Oh, not a single Marine goes down. Uh, well, this could be a problem. Houston, we have a problem. There's a bunch of men with gun coming towards our doorstep and we have nothing. <laughs> we got four spitty boys, three slappy boys, and a couple of, um, uh, I've seen this video once on the internet. All right, 
comes over here, sees the creep expanding, he goes, eh, you built Sunkins. <laughs> At least once. I, I, I mean, no, 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 of course, just, just once, no. Green range coming on up here. Oh, the medics sacrificed themselves, which was nice. I love when medics just casually meander into your uh, sunkins. It does make me feel special. All right, but the medics, of course, saw the lurker eggs, which means they know what's coming. And now you get the fun thing to do. If you are quick with stim, you can kill lurkers like as they're burrowing. Pretty easily, actually. But you kind of got... Oh! Love to see that. Oh, we might... We're committing a little too hard here, I think. Yeah, we're committing straight into detection. That was... The body blocking of the SCDs there was truly incredible. Without the body blocking, you can absolutely get right behind the mineral line. You just kind of siege up here. You kill off the turret or the SCDs if he doesn't hold. And yeah, you are set. Oh, what a bounce. Guys, Terran can literally do anything and it's not fair. We're reinforcing with lings. You see, the thing is, you need, like, more than two lurkers, I think, but... I don't know. We'll see what he can do here. He's still got a bit of an opportunity here. Ooh. Those SPs are... Oh, that brain was really brave. Oh, no, this discombobulated assault here. Now we only have one lurker. Yeah, you just stim it down. Scans to make sure. Yeah, GG, well played. Unfortunately, Dot, I could not get it done. And with that, Gabagoon takes the victory, four to zero. Damn, boy. He's kind of good at the game. Guys, if anyone didn't know, Gabagoon's kind of good at the game. The Gaba Goat. <laughs> All right, guys. That was a nice little series here. It took just under an hour. So we're going to go ahead and run the ads. So that way, when we come back, we can have more StarCraft ad-free. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
All right, guys. Let's see if we can't find another series to cast. I know we got at least one more up our sleeve. Where's the one I was looking at? Yeah, here it is. This is the one that I wanted to cast. This one I think is going to be an absolute banger. this set up there we are there we are make sure the players are aware that they're about to get casted you know it's the polite thing to do and oh boy Am I excited for this series? All right, make sure that's all set. That's all set. More ads. <laughs> Man, if ad revenue was actually worth something, I would consider it. But it's not, so I won't. But what is worth it, guys, is more StarCraft. So let's get right into it. Spawning here in the top left-hand side. With the red SCVs, guys, give it up for Fonger. You might know him as Ponger or Zonger or generally bad at the game. But every once in a while, he plays Terran. And every once in a while, when he plays Terran, he plays it well. So we'll see how he goes. He doesn't know how to handle turn rate. So, I mean, we're off to a great start. His opponent in the bottom right-hand side, our blue Protoss player. You know him, you love him. He burnt his hand, but he's coming back. He only needs one hand to play Protoss anyway, so I'm sure we'll see him again this NSL. Give it up for Black Swan. All right, guys. This, like I said, is going to be a banger PVT. And I can tell you already. I don't know anything about the results. I just know the players. And I'm feeling good. Lights out, four player map. What are we gonna do? I assume it's not a four player map, we might even skip Zealot. Which it's not that he knows it, but they are cross spawn, so any sort of early aggression will kind of fall flat. But meanwhile, Terran here, we got our little setup here for our barracks. So we can try and beat Cheeky, and we have our little micro spot for our Marine. Because if you put your barracks here, the Marines will fit between it, but the Zealots will not. Wait. Fonger. Fonger. And they say Protoss is a gamble race. And they say Protoss is bullshit. Fonger, what are you doing? <laughs> Fonger. Fucking 12 CC, 13 CC. Guys, Terran can't keep getting away with this. Wait, are we gonna? Yeah, we're gonna. We're gonna left scout next. Okay, good. I was gonna say if Black Swan cross scouted and then came up, he did the little end scout. Like, it would be just absolutely game over. But you're going to scout that it's cross-spawn command center first. In another universe, this is what Artosis hates. Cross-spawn command center first while he plays Protoss. <laughs> He's still mad. Alternate universe Artosis is still angry streamer. He's like, what the fuck? Of course, he gets cross-spawn command center first. What a gamble. Yeah. Classic. <laughs> Alright, bunkers going down here. We will have a couple Marines to put in it. The Academy coming on up here, way out of the way. Well, what's this for? Scans? 
Or maybe a stim play. Fonger. Yeah, I can see Fonger doing something crazy with stim. All right, yeah, we did skip this out, like I said. We went straight for that quick Nectus once we scouted. Like, you're still a little bit behind, but it's the best you can do. SCV doesn't care about your Dragoon. He's just going to come on in and scout anyway. He sees everything there is to see. He doesn't know that's everything to see, but you can take a good guess. Protoss setting up to take the mineral only here. So that's a nice boost of mineral income, but of course, you know. Range. So Marines in a bunker with range can contest a goon with range attacking the bunker. What? Huh, okay. Bonker's playing fucking 5D chess over here. Uh, we mere mortals could only hope to understand what he's doing. Alright, we will need to repair the bunker for a little bit. U-238 shells are only about halfway through. And the goon's like, ah, okay, I'll leave. I'm actually surprised he's pulling back here. It's not something you see very often. A lot of times, Rodos will just met, put their foot on the floor and just send it with pressure. But he's pulling back and waiting for the second goon. Which is going to be interesting when he shows back up and the Marines have range. And he's going to be like, wait, what? <laughs> this will definitely give him a little bit of confusion. But third base is up and now mining. That's going to be a huge economy swing. But Terran has more workers. Which means his, yeah, his mining is much more efficient. Because look at this. Like, this base is fine. This is basically empty, and this one's kind of empty. So it's this weird little thing where you could have more bases, but you're not really mining efficiently from them because it's, your workers are so spread out. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Guys, Fonger never disappoints, except every time he loses. But Fonger never disappoints. We've got double tank production. We've got marine medic production. You can have more medics than marines at this rate. These guys standing in the road blocking traffic. These are the people who stand on highways and tell you about their beliefs while making sure you can't get to work. All right, Stim's coming on up here too. Vulture's gonna come by. He's gonna, all the goons are staying home. This one goon here. He's gonna see the tanks. Sees the Marines. So like, wait a minute, did they just shoot from that far away? That's a, that's a, that's a long distance. You see the medics down. You're like, wait a minute. What the hell is this? What is this Terran trickery? Now remember, Stim isn't done yet. So the Marines are not as good as they should be. But it's fine, because here comes more and more tanks. You killed your first two tanks, yes. But what about second two tanks? Alright. We got a shuttle here. We've loaded some zealots into it. That's cool. Man with gun will deal with that. Where's the other medic? Oh, there they are. They're hiding. Oh, nothing gets out. Get out of it. Get out of here. Oh, double kill. We're just hitting that stim button until we win. This is truly the definition of stim to win. Terran has two auto win buttons. The stim button and the siege button. What happens when you hit both at the same time? Well, rumor has it that you just... Everyone instantly GG's. 
It is truly an unstoppable force. Yeah, GG is called. That's that instant win button. Damn, what a neat play from Fonger here. That was super cool. Getting range first, that way your bunker pushes back the goons into Stim, into this Marine Tank Vulture Medic push. I don't know what I saw, but it was really cool. Nice. All right, that puts Fonger up a point. Is it going to be another 4-0? Can Fonger do it? Nah, I don't know. He has Black Swan. I do think this will be at least a competitive series. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, there's only one way to find out how competitive it is, and that's to go straight into game number two. So that's exactly what we're doing here. The game is counting down now. Let's get right into the action. Spawning here in the top left-hand side. With the blue-gray probes. Give it up for Black Swan. And in the bottom left. With the red SCVs. Give it up. For Fonger. He's British, but don't hold that against him. He's still still a decent human being somehow. <laughs> How many fights can I pick in one stream? That's the real question. <laughs> you hear Fong? Um, no, mine's outside. You, you heard Fong. Fonger. Um, mine is outside, sadly. Can't smoke in the doors, but I can. I can uh, I can offer you that. <laughs> You know what we're about here. All right. So my roommate didn't know what blinkers were. I had to teach him. He probably didn't appreciate learning the hard way what a blinker was, but. <laughs> I was like, no, no, no quitting. You go until it's done. Dude, me and my buddies, we used to have like two or three, sometimes even four carts at a time. And so we would just take all of them and hit them all at the same time until they all blinked. And, um, and needless to say, it's probably why I lack most of my brain cells these days. <laughs> but man, was that a, an interesting time. Yeah, some of them definitely can. There, um, there's a lot of variants. Well, I have one brain cell. I wouldn't go as far as to say it's powerful. Fonger said it worked so good. Let's do it again. Academy coming on up here. It is, in fact, a brain cell of all time that I have. Remember the Simpsons? Of course. Oh, one of the last brain cells of genius. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Wait, is he serious? So he went this way with his SCV. He crossed, and then he went down. Oh, Fonger. Man. The Simpsons is such a great show. We have a fire bat? Jeez. 
What the hell are you doing, Fonger? Guys, I... I know we're joking about me not having IQ, but what the fuck is this Terran player doing? Four Marines, a medic, a fire bat, and an SCV walk into a bar. Does it count if it's negative? Oh, he's targeting the fire bat. He's targeting the fire bat. Because we don't want that concussive shell, that concussive damage. Concussive shells. This is StarCraft 2. Oh my god, this is the worst thing I've ever seen for Terran. Oh. All right, medic drops. And with the medic is without the medic, you can't really do anything here. <laughs> Vod Clobson would have won. True. Vod Clobson would have done it. Where, where Fonger fails, Vod Clobson would have won. Mind you, we are still one Rax Academy here. And we dropped the command center. Yeah, this is over. Nope, way too late. Nope. <laughs> they run out and they get one goon. They're like, ah, we got one, boys. Oh god, SCVs are better than goons and SCVs backed up by a medic is a, kind of a scary thought. Oh, what a drill. Uh, but there might be a few too many goons here. Six goons is a lot. Yeah, GG. Jeez, what are with these games? No one wants to play a 10 minute game today, I guess. Sheesh. <laughs> all right. Fonger. Fonger has given us some games of all time. That's for sure. I think it's about time he learned how to macro. <laughs> all right. Let's grab replay number three here. And guys, if nothing else, it's not a 4-0. They've each taken a map. We've got a series on our hands here. Oh, yeah. Let's get it on. Let's see what they can do in map number three. Maybe this time they'll play a little bit longer of a game, right? A little bit longer of a game. A little bit longer. Spawning here in the bottom left-hand side, a sandstorm, a two-player map. So, yeah, this one could go short or it could go very long. This map's kind of weird. Give it up for Black Swan. As opponent in the top right with the red SCVs, give it up for Fonger. The real question is, is he going to do stim again? Right? You wouldn't, right? Friends don't let friends get stimmed twice. Or three times in a row. Uh, I guess I'll let, I guess I'll let Funker do it then. <laughs> Got him. All right. Got a little bit of a micro setup here, so that way in case zealots come across. Because on a two-player map, it is much more likely that at least one zealot comes across. Although it does seem like Black Swan is just skipping the zealot every time. So is this where he proves me wrong and builds one? Or is this where he proves me right and doesn't build one? Yeah, 
coming on up here. I'm surprised Black Swan didn't try and go for like gas deals or anything. Two player map, very decent rush distance, especially because this is the version with the bridges that are completely unblocked. So you can get across the map pretty quickly. Yeah, look at this. A little F1 probe over here. He's sending it up the straight. Oh, kind of goes off the track there for a little bit. God, look at this game's passing. It's almost there. Well, to be fair, passing is more of a factor of the map than it is anything else these days. Because you're actually pretty capable of controlling it, I think. But yeah, still. Could have gotten across, didn't. I love how Fonger checked up here just to make sure Protoss didn't have any like hidden pylons or something in his base. So you're not doing something silly, right? Right? All right. Machine shop. All right, this is looking a little bit more standard, I say, as he's still building Marines. All right, besides Marine production now, it's much more standard. Four Marines, so you have a full bunker. I get it. Son of a bitch. Why do I even try with this dude? This man actually just crazy. All right. Meanwhile, Protoss has a shuttle coming. No other tech. No Robo Bay. No observatory. There it is. I'm just a little too ahead of time. All right, will the shuttle and a couple of zealots be enough to slow down this Terran push until the Reaver can come out? <coughs> All right. Well, I guess we're playing the super creepy. We only have two goons. Jeez, man. He's really just banking on this Reaver. Which, I mean, the Reaver will obliterate the Marines. So it's not a bad bet, right? Just what if he moved out like 15 seconds earlier? But I guess at this level, you kind of know when they're going to move out. So perhaps it's not too bad. Alright, we have Slug, we have Stabby Boy, and we're going to go across the map just as he walks into our base. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> Time to go home. God, that shuttle's so slow without speed. Alright, we got to be careful not to lose this shuttle like we did the other one. Tank start targeting down the Reaver. Reaver has done its job, though. Ah, oh, made quick work of those Marines. Uh, hello, bud. You want to kill him? No. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Whatever. Chill. Fonger, care to explain? And Tank's like, I see it. Can I shoot? Can I shoot? No. Just keep running. All right. Blonk. Got one. And now we just send it into the main. Easy. Uh, turrets have 
38 range. Which, of course, makes it hard to do stuff like this. Oh! This tank has 13 health left. Alright, he's going to get some hands-on loving. Oh, target the SCV. So the tank doesn't die. All right. Meanwhile, Protoss still has yet to take his natural. He's just now going to. We got another Reaver coming out here. So we're going to have double the slug. Good. Twice the slug, double the kills. Observer's going to come across the army and go, huh, army. Yes, they are, mana dog. Good news is I don't, so. I mean, Fonger's played like a bit of a tool so far, but that's normal. <laughs> Black Swan putting up one hell of a fight here. All right, double reaver. Blanc. Blanc. Did he not build scarabs in this one yet? Nope. <laughs> Whoops. Those are kind of important. Got him. Got him. Hey, look at that guy. Fungus the guy who just subscribed. The man who went stim bio two games in a row. How you doing, Fonger? What you missed is um, game two with Flipendo pointing out that Baklovson would have won. But sadly, Fonger did not win. <laughs> Got him, boys. Ah, these have been entertaining games, but it looks like we're finally getting into a macro game here in game three. I say that. Well, I say that, but he's going to throw away the shuttle here. Um. Well, I hadn't even started Beer Star League. How are you watching it? Wait. <laughs> All right. Academy's coming on up here. <laughs> uh, one of these days I have some fun ideas for into the next year or so oh what a drill doesn't save the tank we had one drill yes but what about second drill all right good thing SCVs are actually the greatest combat unit Oh, we got Goliath. Goliaths are Giga Chad units because they shoot both up and down. Truly the greatest unit. So it's like Goliath, SCVs, Siege Tanks. Top three units in the game. Number four is obviously the Marine. Stim. Stim exists. Look at that money. We only have two on gas. There's your issue. I found the issue. I ain't got no gas in it. <laughs> this one's up to snuff. Yeah, being down one SCV in your gas is so painful. You're like, why can't I afford anything? And then you look over and you're like, oh... Protoss setting up to take a third base here. 
with the um, lightest of contains. Imagine being inside the bunker when all of your friendly units start shooting at it. I mean, these Marines had to have been terrified. I actually had an old coworker who was in the Marines who was almost caught up in friendly fire. And him and some of the guys were hanging out outside of the base at like these little ruins that they would just like go and smoke at basically. And some of the convoys, when they came back, they would just unload their 50 cal into those ruins. And one day they did that while they were in the ruins smoking. And they were like, oh, God. But yeah, that's not how I want to go. Uh, yeah, not quite enough Protoss there to engage the Terran might. <laughs> yeah. If we had a good Terran player, this would be over. But we got the best we got is Fonger. I gotta make sure we don't I gotta make sure we don't draft this guy this season. <laughs> I gotta talk with Siri about it. Alright, CC number three coming on up here. Average medic experience. Oh, who needs minerals on the bridge to screw up your army when you could just play Terran instead? Get out of here, minerals. We didn't need your stuff on the bridge to ruin it, <laughs> our army movement. Yeah. Gateways going on. Lots of gates. Temple Archives. We should see a Stargate here at some point. I assume we're going to play Arbiters. Unless he just wants to be Honorable Gateway Man from here on out. He's like, you know what? I had my fun with the Reavers. Gateway's all I need. Yo, H, how you doing? All right, there's this Protoss Forge here, but it's, it's on the high ground, which is it's only real saving grace for how much Terran's surrounding it. But the mine, the mine, Agi. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce things in English, let alone anything that's not quite English. Ag, Ag. Has it been this easy the whole time, and I'm just stupid? Ah, this is going to be a freaking Havier moment all over again. I'm going to be mispronouncing this name for years. Finally, someone corrects me. <laughs> oh, no. So, wait, is Augie correct? It's not age. All right, Augie. Why can't these people have normal names? <laughs> like, like Arnanok. Just have an Irish word as your name. That'd be so much more pronounceable. <laughs> no one's ever struggled with my name. <laughs> oh, I laughed too hard. I'm not feeling the hottest. Shouldn't be laughing that hard. Alright, there's a lot of tear in here, by the way. We're sending it on in, though. Those zealots do not get almost anything done. One tank's like, ah, I'm fine without taking part in flight. But suddenly, there's no tanks left. Because this guy left. This guy died. This guy is over in the middle of nowhere. How did this work? Black Swan. How? Protoss, man. Protoss is built different. Alright. 
Another tank shows up here. Oh, uh, yeah. One tank should make a difference against 10 goons. <laughs> what? No. You guys just need to learn to speak Irish. Good old Gaelic. The turds will help. Yes, the turds were really adding in a lot there. <laughs> Alright, we're setting up here. We're... Uh, uh, I don't like this for part of that. There's a little bit of over extension here. Yeah, we should probably fall back a little bit. All right, scans going down everywhere. Terran adding on more factory, more depot. Look at this brave Marine. That might have been the bravest Marine I've ever seen. <laughs> Dude, you know what the worst part is? So the thing is, with this map, all right, we're trying to get a base up here. We got two cannons, six mostly dead vultures. Uh, yeah, I would reconsider that. Oh, we're gonna dive in here. Uh, with the vultures across the map and the reinforcements not rallied up here, um, Protoss is able to take over the high ground. Um, yeah, there's just a little bit too much with the reinforcements down in here. Alright, so the thing about this map. The original version had an egg here. And then he went to mineral, like a mineral patch here. Right? And the idea is that it's harder for larger units. Like, larger units cannot path across the bridges until you mine it out or kill the egg, right? There's a problem with that, though. Units will still try and path across here, especially with the egg in the middle, right? So you would just get a bunch of, like, medium units just kind of bouncing off of each other in here. Your vultures, your tanks, your goliaths, your lurkers, your goons. They just kind of... And we're really dumb about it, right? So this version, they removed everything on the bridges. So you don't have to worry about it from the beginning. That's a bigger problem because now the rush distance on this map for these units is nothing. So if you want to do some early game like two hatch lurker, you could just run straight across the bridges and into like into position. And I think that's also bad. I I don't know if I'd call it a bad map entirely. I don't like it. And I think, I don't think there's any solution to fixing is the problem. I don't think it's the worst map that has ever been played, but there's, there's no real way of fixing this map either. All right, Protoss is absolutely sending it in here. Oh, big off a few tanks, but we lose all of our zealots here. We're going to have to fall back. I heard it. There he is. We got Arby's. Black Swan over here has the meat. Good old Arby's. Now the problem is the Arby's aren't really doing much. No one's really getting their roast beef sandwiches here. Terrence setting up here and taking the mineral only base. Well, 76 was a great map. 76 was honestly a fun map. I enjoyed it. I know nobody else enjoyed it, but I enjoyed it. Heheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheh
I love that we have our starport, our facility, and our armory all right here at the third base. Where Protoss has been consistently attacking. Oh, the blue crystal of a lifetime! Oh, oh and the mind drag. And you just see everything explode. Oh, no. <laughs> this right here is one, two, three, four, five tanks, three vultures, and a Goliath. It was also like a third of his army. <laughs> he only had plus one, by the way. Yeah, that's, that stays, that's a GG stasis right there. G G <laughs> oh man. Oh, you hate to see it. You win some and then Protoss wins the rest. <laughs> if you uninstalled after that stasis, I would understand. I'm not saying you should, I'm saying that I would understand. <laughs> All right. Get the scoreboard set. All right, guys. Let's hop into the next game. Game four. These guys have been playing a series. This is incredible. The fact that this was missed is an utter shame. But you know what? Using it as hype for NSL 7, guys. Exclamation mark NSL7 in the chat. Guys, I think this is working out real well. So, I mean, you know, take what you can get. It's a shame we didn't get to cast them, but casting them now, I think, is really building up the hype for NSL7. So, spawning here in the top left hand side of Neo Rush Hour with the red SCVs. Give it up for Ponger. I mean, uh, Zonger, um, uh, no, Ronger. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter anyway. Bottom left hand side. <laughs> Bottom left hand side with the blue probe. Give it up for Black Swan. All right. Does Ponger go for another stem push? Is he really crazy enough to do it again? Probably not, but we'll see. I don't know. After the craziness of game one and two, and then game three was a really solid macro game. I think you can macro again. Maybe go for some early push, some like vulture tank or something, marine tank, and then, you know, play a macro game from there at an advantage. You know, I can see it. Black Swan has skipped Zealot every game so far. So I think you can recognize that. Like, oh, he's skipping his Zealot every time. So maybe we could do something early. The Paradiso game? Yes. That was game two. Because it's the lights out, Paradiso. Paradiso. I can't pronounce that. Look, look. They gave the caster with the fewest brain cells the hardest names to pronounce. So um, that's on that's on um, Siri and Cookie that I can't pronounce it. <laughs> and then we had Sandstorm, and now we are on Neo Rush Hour. Yeah, once again, no zealot. All right, we're building Marines. We're getting our three gas, three on gas here. Pull off two. Yeah, it's gonna be straight into factory. Probably with vultures. Probably open vulture into machine shop tank. You gotta remember, this series was played about a year ago. So the meta a year ago is slightly different than what you see nowadays. Uh, no, Terran one lights out, and I think lost Paradiso. Paradiso, and then lost Sandstorm, and now is on you know rush hour. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yep, 
Yeah, as I was saying, the meta's changed a little bit, so. Alright. Then again, it's Fonger. And Fonger has, doesn't know what the concept of meta is. Uh, I mean, Fonger doesn't know a lot of things. So. Kidding, I'm kidding, guys. I know Fonger well enough that I'm just joking with him. Well, then again, he's also British, so he kind of deserves it. Alright, SV will get denied the scout here. Yeah, we're building Marines. We're going to be building tanks. He's going to go for this stim push. Now the, So the thing he did in Paradiso that I thought was really cool was that he went range first when he was using the bunker. He had all the Marines in the bunker and the goon was pushing at it. And he went range first to push back the goon. Not that it really worked out in his favor, but... Robo Bay immediately... So this is going to be exactly like we saw last game. Now the thing is, is that Reavers are really good against um, Bio. Hey, supply blocks are part of the build. Don't worry. It's calculated. You're saving money to buy things. All right? it, it's like Warcraft 3 where you don't go into upkeep. You just kind of stay at uh, 50 out of 50. You're like, oh, I don't want to go into upkeep. So you just don't build anything. You get your upgrades instead. Alright. Reaver's coming out here. Drop it here. Boop. GG. No, one, one, one on the back of this. So we got the academy just for the medics, I guess. Medic, singular. Come on, girl. You're going to have to hard carry. Is there shield changing arms? What? I've never seen this before. Look at it. Her arm is... Her shield is changing what arm it's on. There it is. What the fuck? Oh, this pro comes out here and goes, Huh. That's a lot of stuff that shouldn't be here. Black Sun's like, No, 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 no. No, 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 no. And this is exactly how Terran lost last time, was by going up a ramp. And also attacking with, like, a weird hodgepodge of units. But it gets scouted, so he's going to go home. Hi, Mr. Zealot. Just kind of following around. All right. Here we go. The Reaver's finally out. Oh, there we go. That's a good hit. Bop. Bye, Marines. All right. We'll get pushed back. It forced a lot of pulling. We had to pull all of our SCPs down to the natural, and then we tried bringing them back, and we had to send them out again. But overall, it killed one Marine, or two Marines and one SCV. And we lost both Zealots. Whoa. There's no shuttle here. Where's the shuttle? He absolutely missed the shuttle. <laughs> Poor Wraith. He has one job, and he, he didn't do it. You just set him on patrol through here. Hope for the best. Oh, we see the shuttle now, so the Wraith can come join the fight. Oh! Oh, this is box art combat right here. Alright. This one tank, unfortunately, is going to be sacrificed for the greater good. What is that greater good? I don't know. We don't know. But the Dominion said it's the greater good. Therefore, it's the greater good. Oh. Nice. Bait him into that mine. Where are you going, tank? What are you doing, bud? I don't think the tank knows what he's doing either.
All right, Protoss with the double expand. Drops the natural and takes the other main. Love to see it. All right. So now what's Protoss going to do? We're going to drop more gateways. Get some observers. Oh. What are you doing, tank? <laughs> These tanks are, um... Tanks don't know how to drive. All right, armory coming on up here. All right. Oop. Don't kill the Wraith. The Wraith is the most important unit in this army. Look at him. It, doesn't he just look badass? Clearly the most important unit. Observers going in, seeing what there is. Oop. Attack upgrades here. That is plus one. Protoss doesn't have a forge. Nope. So no upgrades. Oh! Oh, Fonger. AFK. Oh! Ho -ho! Yeah, fuck that Marine. Losing both reavers like that is terrible. I think once you realize the wraith is there, you just leave both reavers out. You just let them blow things up until they die. Because otherwise, you just lose them in the shuttle, and that's just sad. Terran's moving out and taking the mineral third. This map was always a little interesting to take this base right here. Right? Because it's completely open, and it is just a mineral only. But it's also right next to your natural, so your rally points will always just be here. Very interesting map design. What the hell? That tank was adventurous. Third base set up here. Yeah, we got a good setup here. We got tanks. Those are good. What's Protoss going to do? Is Protoss just going to sit back? Black Spawn says, all right. He's not even going to stand there in an arc. What a missed opportunity. What's his plan on the back of this? Is he going to macro up anything? Pro count's kind of low. The worker count in general is... Kinda low in this game. Like 46 to 48, like it just feels kind of low. When you look at their saturation, right? You'd expect them to be at like 55 or so. I mean, I get Fonger being behind in workers because I mean, half of them got blown up there in one shot. But yeah, I don't get why Black Spawn's probe count. I mean, I guess he just transferred a lot over here, so it feels a little bit lower. Maybe. There you go. Double forge and a stargate. So you know what? I know what I need. Everything. Templar archives. Yeah, quite literally everything. Get him, boys. Look at this man. Absolute killer. All right. Terran army decides it wants a fight. A lot of zealots here. Not much to buffer against the tanks. Uh, yeah. Yeah. To say that's not great, a little bit of an understatement. Black Swan leaves the happiest Protoss you've ever seen. 
Because you just reset the tank count, <laughs> essentially. With no upgrades and everything, yeah, you gotta be feeling good. Alright, Protoss Army moving to control this center area. Vulture's gonna go over here to this base, but the cannons are almost done. Oh. There we are. This one will finish. Find enough time for the other one to finish. And with two cannons here, it's just enough firepower to deal with vultures. Observers on either side of the turret just pointing and laughing at them. Like, ah, get out of here, turret man. This Wraith eternally on patrol just in case. You never know, right? When that surprise shuttle. Will I be in Japan? I will not be. I have things like work today. This is why I asked for Sunday default times, but nope, never got that. <laughs> so I can't participate in any races, basically, unless we start doing Sundays. A little sad about it, ZJ. I miss you guys, but everyone voted for Saturdays for some reason. I'll be watching the race at my gig for sure. So. Alright, here we go. We're diving in. We just have too much Protoss, I think. This vessel is like, don't worry, guys. I see things. I can see all of the things. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, what a sound. Yeah, poor Terrence. So the thing is, is that the European tracks are at an even worse time when we do three hours before. Because that's 4 a.m. <laughs> for most of the tracks. Uh, for me. And that's why, it's another thing I hate. That's why I wanted a default time on Sunday where we can all fucking race. God forbid. Oh, I thought I heard a storm. Must have just been the cannons getting warped in, even though I wasn't looking at that. Because, great game. Alright, here we are. Adun Tori Doss. We got Arby's. We still have our army posturing out in the map. Darren's actually not bad in supply. Even in workers, not far off in total supply, down about 10. The problem is it's all in vultures right now. He has no tanks. There's six. Yeah. Eight tanks is not nearly enough. Yeah, I know ZJ. That's why I just have given up racing with you guys. Uh, well, I even said it. I was like, yeah, that's why I'm done racing. Is because I know that I never will. No one wants a time that'll be good for me, so. I just, that's why I've retired the season, basically. Once again, Protoss comes in here, finds Terran out of trying to set up a position, and just cracks it. At this point, Black Swan can absolutely, I mean, he's driving a wedge between the third and fourth base, right? Which is bad for Terran for a number of reasons. Not the medics, those things are expensive. Oh, the sound of Essence dying, though, is beautiful. All right, at this point, uh, Black Swan's not entirely sure about finishing this off, but I don't think he knows that there's a base here. I think I think Black Swan's misreading this as Terran moving here was to get ready to take this, not to defend this already being taken. Interesting. I uh, was like, yeah, it doesn't matter. I'll drop another base. Ninja base. All right, 
as that poor goon died to vultures. Kind of a dishonorable death. All right, we come in here, see this base. We're going to go ahead and give that a good cancel. Fonger's going to send it. And this is going to be uh, are we going to base trade? Is this base trade TV? But not because that's a copyright. Oh, I don't know if they still own the trademark to that or not. It's a copyright trademark, whatever. But it is fun to call things that because they honestly had a base trade TV was a great name, if nothing else. They had great content too, but what an incredible name. Whoa. The problem with putting mines on top of production is when things spawn, your units are also right there. Oh, give me a tank shot right in there, please. Yeah, Arbiter's helping, boys. Look at it. So wait, at what point are you supposed to stasis the Terran's SCVs? At what point in the game do you come over here and just ping? I know you're supposed to do that at some point. I, I've seen the game. There's a reason our heart emote is a pylon heart. I know a bit of my history. Wow. We went from the most overwhelming stasis to the most underwhelming, possibly. 2-1 versus 2-2. Two -two. Currently for upgrades. Upgrades. Vessels have zero armor upgrades. Um, absolutely missed opportunity by Terran. Does that block the command center? I feel like that blocks the command center. I'm not an expert on this because things like this always look like they block the command center and they don't. But, I mean, it's going to do its job. I'm going to push that back. Can't build there. Something's in the way. Oh, yeah. This is absolutely off center or off uh, position. Okay, that's a good stasis. All right, good D-Matrix, but unfortunately, it's not enough. And the Protoss, Protoss is like, roll tide, and just rolls through. Black Swan here is very scared of, like, these small bits of army. And I get it, right? Like, you don't know if there's mines and everything over here or if it's just what you see. But it is just what you see at this point. And the mines are all the way back here. So, like, at some point you can send it. Or at least wait around to try and kill these guys off. in. Terran's going to move into the bottom right, and there are bases down here that can be easily killed off. This one's got nothing but a couple cannons. This one's got nothing at all. So yeah, we should be able to come in here, crush this. The problem, they don't really have anywhere to go except into more Protoss forces. Alright. We're going to bunch up here. The Arbiter just kind of floating in and around the fight. Almost dies, but it doesn't. And yeah. Terran army gets sandwiched. We're going to try some vultures in here, but this isn't going to go well. This goon are trying to figure out how to get over here into the fight. 
Get the mind. Ooh, there's a good hit. But yeah, we are fully surrounding what's left of the Terran army at this point. 360 no scope surround. Yeah, Fonger's gonna tap out there. GG. Damn. Guys, is Black Swan doing it? Guys, is Black Swan doing it? I think so. He is playing Protoss, of course, which is easier, so. But with that, guys, we're going to take a quick break because the ads are about to run. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. We just don't want him running mid-game.
Alrighty then. Now that Bezos is happy, we can get back to StarCraft and we can be happy. Well, I'm not going to say that StarCraft brings happiness, but I'm not saying it doesn't bring happiness. Alright guys, I'll stop with the bad jokes and instead I'll get us right into the next game. So we can watch Fonger lose. I mean, we can watch these guys duke it out at match point. <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> Spawning here in the bottom left-hand side with the blue probes. Give it up for Black Swan. Match point. All he needs to do is win this one, and he is home free. And his opponent in the 12 o'clock position with the red SCVs. Always making it hard on himself. The, you know, the, the Terran approach to life, right? Always make it more difficult than it needs to be, guys. Give it up for Fonger. All right. Three-player map, Tempest, designed by Surrey. Great map. I'm definitely not biased or anything. Definitely not a, you know, a map that I asked him to make or anything. No, no, not so. No bias whatsoever. It is a great map though. As far as three player maps go, I enjoy it a lot. All right. The question is, what do we do now? Some of our more gimmicky builds have not worked out too well. The macro game, that eh, was a little rough. So what do we do? How does Fonger try and bring it back here? Well, my first thought would be BBS, but clearly he's not doing that. He's too scared. You know how he is. But... I mean, not Tempest, you can play a solid macro game. Have some fun. Also, Alexander, thank you for the follow. Always appreciated. Too low skill build. Mm. Sure. And that is why you fail. Scouts going out here. Evo. All right. Nice quick factory here. One Marine into factory. We probably won't be putting on the um, production of Marines here. Oh, we still could, but. If we're going for a quicker factory, it usually means that you want factory units instead of barracks units. Although what he is truly missing here is ghosts. You know, if he built a few ghosts and you just lock down some goons, drop a nuke. Imagine cloning out a dozen ghosts to lock down an army of goons. <laughs> and you just nuke them. Nuclear launch detected. Now you see, these are the kind of builds that would help Fonger win a game. Sadly, he has never thought of them. Maybe I should switch to Terran. Yeah, if I switch to Terran, then maybe we could um, we could see some innovations happening. All right, Dragoon denies the SCV entrance, which is unfortunate. You always want denying entrance from the club just kind of sucks. All right, three gate goon. It's a classic. It works. Then I mean, for match point, I love it. But if you know what? You can't beat the classics. All right. Let's see what we get here. 
do anything else. We're just, yeah, we'll just keep up with the plastics. At this point, Fonger's like, what are you up to? Sadly, his SP will just die. Oh, oh, what a move. Mines and speed coming on up here. Meanwhile, we are still just making tank. Make tank. All right, when you show up and you see six goons, you're going to go, huh, that's a lot of dragoon. Yeah, at this point, Fonger's got to go, huh, that's more dragoons than he normally should have at this point. Whoops, should probably reset our rallies. Ugh. We're gonna stay out here and fight. Try to save the tanks. Whoa, two goons fall immediately. Third goon's down. Um, the tanks are dropping quicker than the goons are though. That's the problem. Oh, oh, the mines. Oh, our rally points are broken. Oh, we're still rallying out here for the tanks. We got some mines. We're just cranking out the vultures here. Oh. Some poor soul decided to find out where a mine was. All right, siege mode's coming on up here. We're getting more tank. And a high ground tank, like, you know, nice up. Poke, tug it right on in here. We'll be fine. We're actually across the map as well laying mines. There's goons in position to stop us from going up, but we stop the natural from going down. We get mines on the ramp. And one of them connects. But that, there's still three mines out here, and considering we are just now about halfway through our robo, it's going to be a moment before Protoss can follow up with any reinforcements. Setting up our little tank area. All right, we come in. We see the Nexus is going down. We see four goons. All right. Now you have a good idea of where he's at. We're going to drop our own command center on the high ground. We're going to be super safe. All right. Still on three gates here. Building out some zealots now, because you know zealots are cheap and useful. <laughs> All right, four tanks on the high ground enough to flatten a lot of things that come by. All right, still just on the two-pack production, keeping up that tank. There it is. There's the third factory. Obviously, you can't go too much higher than two-pack production on uh, a single base, but natural's coming on up here, so. Whoa! Welcome, Roddy! Look at this. We're here for the better StarCraft. You'll love to see it, guys. I'm glad you... <laughs> Wrong game. Nah, I think this is the right game. This is clearly the superior one. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> guys, welcome to the better StarCraft, guys. Don't you worry. <laughs> we have currently the finals from NSL 6, which is a, we call it Nam Star League. It's run by one of our Brood War teams. This is um, the finals between Black Swan and Fonger. They were tiered finals. And so far, this has been an incredible series of just fun back and forth chaos. Currently, Fonger's trying to take his natural. We have a lot of goons here about to lay on some pressure. Black Swan just getting his natural up here. We got Zealots. We got him in a shuttle. Look at it, guys. You cannot build units out of this shuttle for some reason. Yeah, the shuttle only moves units. It doesn't spawn them. I know. Weird, right? <laughs> All 
All right, we're sending it. All right, we didn't need that shuttle anyway. The Goons are going to come in here and break down the front door. It's not looking good for Fonger, but the mines. Guys, they're actual mines. They only fire once. They don't kill everything in existence, too. Well, they do. I, I should rephrase. They absolutely kill everything in existence, but they only fire once. <laughs> And with some good mines getting vultures running out here and laying down some good mines, absolutely ruined this goon push. Of course, we unseized at the perfect time, so that also helped. But and with that, Fonger's gonna hold, and he's actually got a little bit of a chance now. He's up in workers. Overall, they're equal in supply, so that means that you know a little bit more army supply for Protoss. But that's fine. It's all in dragoons and zealots. Tanks are, the one thing that doesn't change between StarCrafts is that tanks are really good, guys. Tanks are still really good in this game, too. <laughs> Barracks is just hiding over there in the corner. Oh, it's a minefield, and we have no observers here. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, you're right. StarCraft 2 does look bad when you compare it to Brood War. Absolutely true. <laughs> Can confirm. Guys, you even need a building to build observers in this game? It's the epitome of balance, guys. Alright, observers gonna come out, we'll clean up the mines. Darren's got a bit of a push here. We got an SCV for repairs or turrets. Vulture tank. Send it on in. Yeah, we can just get mines down. This is a small group of goons. It doesn't really stand any chance against this kind of firepower. Gonna have to pull the tanks back here. So four goon. It takes eight goon shots to kill a tank, right? So four goons will two shot a uh, tank. So that's what he's trying for here. Unfortunately, he's not gonna get it. The zealot runs in, trying to get the mines to detonate on the tank, pulling friendly fire. Brood War did it first. Mm, actually, kind of works. But suddenly you have nothing, and vultures are what we call good against zealots and workers. They're just throwing rocks at probes. That's all they're doing here. And at this point, Fonger is just rallying units across. Uh, he's got to be building units, and then they'll be rallying across. Building an NG bay here just to make sure that Protoss can't break out easily. It's all about sending a message. He has to be comes into the main. He's like, hey, guys, I'm wanting... Oh, he's going to get the probe kill. Come on. Oh, we pulled all of our probes just to make sure we got that kill. Beautiful. Yeah. And with this, Protoss is kind of stuck in the main. Terran can just rally in more stuff. The NG Bay is going to finish up here. Yeah, it's looking good. Remember, in this game, high ground means that you have a chance to miss your shot. Also, thank you all for the follows and, yes, the redeeming of the Suri. <laughs> Suri is our map maker and staff on Platinum Esports. And it was a running joke that he was two, uh, he was two channel points ahead. And he had 69, 422 channel points. And he went, how do I get rid of two channel points? Oh, those poor goons. Guys, do not drink the blue goo juice. This blue juice right here is considered, um, it'll cause cancer according to the state of California. So you do not want to drink this. There's a little warning label. You can't see it. It's on the underside of the goon. But yeah, this can cause cancer according to the state of California. Oh, we pulled the mine in. Yeah, look at that. The goon juice. The juice that powers the Dragoons. <laughs> GG is called. Fonger's bringing it back, baby. He's going to try at least. Let's go. We got more of a series going. This is a best of seven finals, friends. And at this point, it is now two to three. Can Fonger bring it back to match point? Or is he finally going to fall to Protoss? One way to find out. Thank you, Roddy, for the raid. I assume he's already eating his McDonald's with Vicky because I, I know Roddy. He's, he's already got the McDonald's sitting down. He's probably putting Nathaniel's on the TV. <laughs> he's like, oh, hey, look, let's see what's going on. 
All right, friends. We have that facial hair. <laughs> yeah, one of these days I'll remember to shave. All right, friends. Game number six. Let's get right into it. I'm, I just really want to see how this series goes. This has been an incredible series thus far. And it's only getting better. So without further ado. Spawning here. In the top right hand side. With the brown probes. He's finally changed his color. He's been blue every game in this series. But now with the brown probes. Give it up for Black Swan. And in the bottom left, with the red SCVs, give it up for our boy, our Terran hero. It's Fonger. This man is truly a Terran hero in the fact that he doesn't know what he's doing, but he's really good at it. <laughs> oh. So the question is, what's he going to do this game? He's been doing some cheesy early game pushes that have done mixed results. Uh, let's go with that. So is he going to keep trying to do these early pushes or is he going to, you know, maybe settle down into a macro game? That's one way to find out. All right. Of course, in Brood War, guys, if you've never played, first of all, you're missing out. Brood War is truly a great game. This is back in the heyday of Blizzard making good games without understanding why they were good. So no one truly knows why Brood War is good, but it just is, right? You start with four workers and you have to build your way up from the ground up. So there's so much more variation to the openings. So in StarCraft 2, you start with 12 workers and you really don't get a whole lot of choice because you have so many workers and you, you're kind of already on the path to a macro opener. And the cheesiest thing you can do is like a 12 pool, right? In Brood War, you can do a four pool. And let me tell you, that'll mess him up real good. <laughs> Something of an expert on that myself. All right. Barracks coming on up here. Barracks units, Marine, Firebat, Ghost, and Medic. Not really good in this matchup. You'll normally see people going Mech. However, like I've said, Fonger... Fonger plays this matchup in a very different way. So he likes to have more than a couple Marines. And he does these crazy Marine tank pushes. But they are cross-spawn. Guys, this is a four-player map for two people. Another thing you've probably never seen if you only watch StarCraft 2. And you don't watch GSL. And you started watching in Legacy of the Void. Which honestly is a fairly reasonable percentage of StarCraft 2 viewers. At least from my experience. So these guys have to check the all the corners to figure out where each other are. The workers pass each other here and you go, oh, okay, we're cross spawn. Factory coming on up here. A couple of Marines to make sure the scout doesn't get in here. It'll also help with goons later on. Well, like I said, he also might push across with them. Only, only Fonger knows, and honestly, he doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> I'm sure. Right. So a, a common build would be to get your vulture before you add on your machine shop. Not your tech lab, your machine shop. But Fonger going straight into machine shop, keeping three workers on gas means that he wants to do a tank push. Black Swan here dropping a early nice, nice early nexus here. One gate straight into goon. Goon range. This makes him shoot further. Doesn't make him walk better. They <clears throat> Sorry, guys. I am also a sick today. But goons... <coughs> oh, yeah. I'm not feeling the hottest. But we're here anyway. Goons might not know how to walk across the map. But, man, with this upgrade, can they shoot for miles? Yeah, look at this. Normally, you max out at about three Marines when you're in this matchup. That's enough for your bunker. It'll push back your goons. It'll help with your defenses. So that's why he has these three up front and these four hidden, right? The medic coming out up here, not a medevac. It doesn't fly. It doesn't carry your units. It's not overpowered. She just sits here and she heals them. 
Also, something I learned today is that her shield switches arms randomly. There's two sprites, one for a shield on each arm. And I just learned this, like, a little bit ago during this stream. All right, one goon's getting pushed up this way. Army figuring out how to path. Pathing in this game, obviously a little bit, a little questionable. What do we got here? SCV, we got six Marines and a medic and a tank. Another tank on the way, more Marines. Spider mines being researched for the vultures. Remember, once you have spider mines, you're paying 75 minerals for three mines and you get a vulture for free. So NSL seven. I'll tell you guys here in just a moment after we see if Bunger can finally pull it off. This is the push that won him game one. Can it win him? What are we on? Game six? <laughs> yeah. It's been a long road. This medic's got a lot of work ahead of her. She's got to keep all of these boys fighting. Yeah, we're going to take down that pylon. Now, goons, goons are really good here, but it takes four goon shots to kill a marine. Because, all right, there's a lot. There's a lot that goes into that, but essentially all what you really need to know is that it takes four goon shots to kill a marine. So marines actually can survive against goons in low numbers like this. We're pulling the probes to fight. Probes will not detonate spider mines. Only dragoons will, and zealots, but in this instance, only dragoons will be detonating these mines. The workers will not be bothered by them. All right, if we can at least kill the nexus here, and then you go home. That's a big win for Fonger. But Fonger's probably going to want more. Oh, especially if we can box these goons in a corner. Oh. Oh, one shot potential removed. Yes. And now the goons have to run up the ramp and the naturals forfeit. He's got three gates here, so he'll be able to replenish this count quickly. But look at this one. Like, this guy's half health. Oh. Oh. And, yep, we lost one. Another tank coming across here. And that Nexus is gone. The NSL 7, guys, if you've ever played Brood War, even if you haven't and you want to play Brood War, NSL 7 is a fun team league. We have a draft coming up in a couple weeks. It's all about having fun. It's obviously a competition, but it's... We, we played it because we enjoy the game. We don't play because, oh, we're, this is the highest competition in the land. Nah. NSL is all about having fun. And in the end, you end up with these crazy series by guys that are just having fun. Would highly recommend. Yo. Dentistus just subscribed. Ernia one us of this America, baby. <laughs> USA. Anyone, USA. 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 Behind this, we're dropping our second factory. Macro slipping up a little bit as he micros the push. But, I mean, realistically, this is what matters right here. Oh, uh, the goons trying to walk down the ramp. Otherwise, they just die on the ramp. And, ah, uh, this tank line goes deep, baby. Oh, it's a massacre. And Black Swan says, yep, that's it. We're done here. GG, guys. We're going to game seven. Best of seven. We're going straight to game seven. There's the glitch that Roddy talked about, just by the way. Subscribed Have you ever heard him complain about it? America, it baby. is a thing. No, your series did not dot us, sadly. But this one is going all the way. Because these guys are... Nuts? Yeah, they're nuts. That's what we're going to go with. All right. There we are. I have to manually update a scoreboard because it doesn't exist in Brood War like it does in StarCraft 2. Guys, we're living in 1998. <laughs> I am nuts. But, like, the good kind. Hehehehe. <laughs> Fire had not been invented yet. True. Fire was invented in 2001.
Yeah. So up until 2001, we all had electric stoves. And then in 2001, we discovered fire. And that's when we started using gas stoves. For those of you who were born after the year 2001. <laughs> Oh god, this is why I'm not this is why I'm I don't have nice things. How are the pups? Or is the pups? You know what? I can go get them. Give me, I need a new beer anyway, guys. Give me 10 seconds. I'm going to go get the pup. Guys, you're going to love my dog. I love my dog at least. looking at you girl do you don't fall off my leg all right come on girl sit girl stop falling off you're getting too big for this you know that you're getting fat here you go Tally say hi Tally say hi oh we are training you not to bark so. oh yeah your sister's a little sad that you're you're here and she's not Good girl. Oh, that's a good girl. Dude, so she sees her OB. She sees the OBS preview and just looks at herself. Okay. Do you want to go? Do you want to go back to your sister? Oh, your tail. Yeah, your tail's just broken. No. They're a little chaotic, but man, are they adorable. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, I love them, but <laughs> they are chaos. Soon. What is it? The six? So what? Not, not Monday, but the Monday after is when they get fixed. And then they, hopefully they calm down just a little bit, and then they can hang out in here a little bit longer. But as of right now, they are way too excited to sit still, and I don't have the ability to watch them while I'm with you guys. <laughs> oh, all right, guys. After that fine distraction, let's go ahead and boot up the final game of this series, guys. Best of seven. We've made it all the way to game number seven. Fonger won game number one. Two, three, and four were all won by Black Swan. Putting him right on the edge of match point. And Fonger's bringing it back, baby. He said, it ain't over till it's over. And you know what? He's right. It ain't over yet. But let's watch it. Let's see, let's see what Game 7 has for us. All 
All right, friends, here we go. <coughs> oh, yeah. I probably should not be smoking this much while I'm sick. My body does not enjoy it. All right, spawning here. In <laughs> Look, uh, here, not for lack of trying, you know. Thank you all for the follows again, by the way. I do appreciate every single one of them. There's just a lot of them. Also, for everyone who redeemed nice. Nice. All right. Top right-hand side of Neverland, a map that saw very little use in the regular season of NSL 6. But, you know what? It is a cool map. It's a fun little three-player map. And honestly, I don't. I think it deserves more love. Give it up here, though, for Black Swan with the yellow probes. And in the 9 o'clock position, and if you cannot read a clock, that is the one on the left. This is Fonger with the red SCVs. All right, guys. So, map 7. What do you do? Fonger has seen a lot of a lot of power behind these weird marine tank pushes, right? That by most standards aren't quote unquote good. But like any good ladder hero, he makes them work anyways. <laughs> So I'm curious, is he going to try one more to close out the series? It's a bit of a gamble because there's a reason it's not considered good is that they're, generally speaking, like pretty counterable as long as Protoss catches it and is ready for it. But Black Swan hasn't really, he's skipping his Zealot, he's, he's scouting, he just kind of runs into the Marines and dies, and then all of a sudden there's a move out and he's like, oh, uh... So perhaps there is some potential here. All right. Marines coming on up here. What are we doing? Just checking for anything that is natural. Sometimes Protoss might hide a pylon back here and try and build gateways. Be super aggressive. Remember, the quickest way to have your forces at your enemy's base is to build your production in your enemy's base. It, it truly is just five head. Oops. Man doesn't quite know the map. The probe didn't quite need to go where it needs to go. It's, the base is like down here, I believe. Oh, Fonger. Both players not quite knowing the map. And this is what I mean is that the map didn't get played much at all during the regular season, right? So as you can see at this point, these guys don't quite know where the bases are. So Fonger ends up missing the scout. Nice. Yeah, they'll pass each other. He'll be like, oh, Protoss is down here. Oh. Well, he's not there. I can tell you that one for free. All right, two Marines in the CC. Factory coming up on the back of it. Yo, how you doing, Pones? Welcome. All right, Probe's gonna actually just make it on here, in here and see for once, like, huh. The, the barracks isn't blinking. Uh, like the factory's coming on up. The CC is more than halfway done. So, huh, are, are we macroing? <laughs> how do I do this? Shuttle, are we gonna go reverse again? Come on, show me the Robo Bay. Yeah, buddy. This means that truly anything can happen now. All right. Academy coming on up here. So academies will allow you to not only build medics and fire bats and ghosts if you get your covert ops, but it allows you to get scanners on the side of your command center. So like orbitals, I know we still have a lot of StarCraft II viewers here. Orbitals, your command center transforms and you just get map hack. Instead, you add a little add-on here, and that's your little map hack add-on. 50 energy, and you go boo -doo 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 -doo, and you can see a whole section of the map for free. All right, Reaver coming on up here, AKA what the disruptor should have been but the Legacy of the Void devs were just cowards and 
did not want to give us something that would have been fair and fun to fight against. Despite making them for the campaign. And them being just kind of like the better choice in the campaign. And here we go. Look at this. This is what they are. Little comsat stations. Fun fact. This is something that even some Brood War people don't actually know or haven't at least thought about. The way Brood War energy regenerates, it's like just over a second, right? There we go. Free map hack. He's going to scan. He's going to see the Robo Bay. See some goons there. He's like, oh, okay, there's a reaver somewhere. Yeah, you pull stuff into the main immediately to deal with the uh, shuttle. So if he scans something like DTs, right, coming, it is actually faster to kill the comsat and rebuild it than it is to let it regenerate energy. And that is just one of those facts of life. All right, Reaver's here. Bloom. 100 damage. Oh! Bye, Marine. Oh. Oh, we even saved the Zealot. That's nice. All right. Everyone out of the bunker. Come on. Oh. Six kills. Oh. Okay, that's good. We are slaughtering Marines. Marines are... This is why Marines are not good in this matchup. They're just easy to counter with Reavers, with Storm, with Zealots. Basically, everything is good against Marines. And Marines are good against kind of nothing. Oh, there's a turret here. He's got to be careful. He's going to dive back in here. And deny this turret. But yeah, at this point, he's going to have to get out here. He's got no shields. 27 HP left. Citadel coming out up here. So this is how you get your Zealot upgrades, and it also unlocks your Templar archives. And with your Templar archives, that's how you get your High Templar and your Dank Templar. Turret ring going up here to deal with the sh possibility of more shuttles. Because, you know, that's... As you guys have seen, the Reaver is a good unit. It doesn't quite instant delete things like the Disruptor does, but it's, it's close. <laughs> it's close. Imagine if you could pick up a Disruptor after it fired the no... Alright guys, you remember how I just said that, like, Marines aren't good in this matchup? because things like Reavers and basically everything else exists. Yeah, uh, Dada here is a person who understands Brood War, and I think his reaction can tell you everything you need to know about what we're looking at right here. <laughs> All right, double slugs coming here at the front door. Oh! So... Scarab da scarabs work in a weird way that if you're running from the scarab, oh, he just saw the gate. Yeah, he just saw the um, extra barracks coming on up here. Yeah, once he scouts it, it's over, right? Right? So, like, if you know exactly what your opponent's going for you and you already have the counter for it, you just win, right? Oh, we target the Reaver. Okay, we target both Reavers. We don't save them with the shuttles. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, he's already going up towards Templar, right? Because he's got the Citadel. He didn't drop the Templar archives, actually. Doesn't have any more Reavers in production. There could be a bit of an issue here. Stim is done. Stim is good in both games, guys. Man with gun and drugs. Very good. I mean, that's usually my weekend anyway, but, like, <laughs> USA. Wait. <laughs> Wait. All right, there's one zealot in this shuttle being hand-delivered to the front line. Comrade, you have been sent to front line on a private jet. <laughs> yeah, cannons would stop this. We don't have a forge. 
Reavers would stop this. We're not building any. Storms would stop this. We don't have our Templar archives. There's no way, right? There's no way that you see... This is a... Alright, everyone knows this field. If you've ever played StarCraft, you know this field. You scout exactly what they're doing. You know immediately what you're up against. And you still die to it. <laughs> this is something that I think a lot of us know. I think a lot of us have experienced this at least once. Fonger is truly built different. If anyone else tried this, there would be two storms here. This would all die in one storm. This would die in a second storm. And then the Reavers would blow up what's left. Like, it, it truly makes no sense that Fonger's able to do this. But he is. Also, engineering base can fly in this game, by the way. If you didn't know. It, it, they're pretty cool like that. Um, StarCraft 2 streamer. That's really Rotterdam. Cool dude. Yeah, as if you don't know Roddy is, he's the GOAT SC2 caster. He's the only one with passion because he's the only one who did NA last night. Look at this. We're ferrying, we're elevatoring outside of our base because this is, these are the same level and there's just a wall here. So it's not really el elevatoring, but. <laughs> if I told you it wasn't quite Rotterdam, would you believe me, Dada? <laughs> All right, here we go. We're sending it in from the back. But we, why? Well, we only have commit. We lose zealots. <laughs> yeah, probably. This gateway's unpowered. All right, here we go. We're gonna send it over here. Look at all these medics. Medics are expensive. Yeah, GG is called. Fonger takes game seven in the craziest series I've seen in a long time. He goes from 1-0 to 1-3 to 4-3 victory. I cannot believe it. <laughs> I truly cannot believe it. The man is just built different. All right. Man with gun is good and <laughs> strong. All right. Let me see what else we got here. I think I could probably get away with one more. A little, not feeling the hottest, but I know. I wasn't going to escalate. I think I'm going to do one more. Yeah, this one, this one should be um, at least heavy in the sparks. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm going to let the, I'm going to let some of the ads run real quick while I set up the scoreboard here. Uh, also, I do think we should stop that person from casting in general, but I also know that I'm biased on that one. So, um... <laughs> All right. So, I'm getting the scoreboard set up, guys. I actually have to manually type in the player names and pick the races. And, you know what, for a little bit of behind the scenes... Uh, let me just out of that there we are this is what we use and this was developed by someone in chat oh it's not on the scene so it doesn't actually work. Oh, I, if I just hit studio mode there we are it's back so this was built by Dada in chat absolute hero of the people and we can you type in the player name you can have teams if they're we're doing team events which at this point, this is not part of the team segment, so you can update their score and everything. You see it updates down here. You can choose the maps, round name, and then this is what you see on screen. Guys, the Brood War community is um, innovative, if nothing else. It's a bunch of people who have been um, working with computers for far too long. <laughs> we invented fire. That's true. Well, according to day nine, we invented theory crafting, <laughs> which, um, true. I, I never really thought about the fact that theory crafting was a Starcraft term until like he pointed it out again. I was like, huh, yeah, I guess it was. I've just used it for 
Well, I played StarCraft since 2001, so about that long. <laughs> Used it for as long as I can remember. Ooh, a new scoreboard. Okay. All right, guys. Make sure you've got a beer. I've got a new one. I finished my last one. Make sure you got your beer. Make sure you've got something to enjoy. And guys, we got a little bit more StarCraft. I'm not feeling the hottest. I was going to call it after that series, but since we've got so many of you here, I got to show you more StarCraft. I can't just not. So, everyone, cheers. Me and my roommate got like this little variety pack of IPAs from Costco, and he hates all of them. He's not an IPA kind of guy, but I am. And I hadn't tried this one yet, and I like it a lot. I don't even know which one this is. Hashtag not sponsored by Costco or um, Lagunitas. Oh, it's a little something something. It's a um, smooth and silky wheat IPA. So, yeah, it's a good beer. Hashtag not sponsored. <laughs> but here we go, friends. Into the next series. The way NSL works. Actually, you know what? We'll get into the game. I'll introduce the players. And then I'll explain to you why we have so many finals. For some amount of cohesion. Top left-hand side. With the dark blue probes, guys. Give it up for worst. He kind of is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's actually really good at the game. And the bottom right-hand side with the pink drones, guys. Give it up for Syrup. So the way NSL works is that it's 10 weeks of team games. And then there is, at the end of it, like a round of 16, we call it. And it's all individual play. And we break it down into tiers. And I believe there were seven tiers last season. I'd, I'd have to double-check to be sure. Numbers are hard. But... So each tier has its own finals. And the top tier we casted on the official NOM channel the other day, that was Hawk and J Yeah, JY. That was a that was a banger finals. Hawk took no prisoners in a 4-1. It was nuts. Um, and then we have casted what? This will be our third finals for today that we've casted. Absolutely incredible StarCraft. Right. we got a little bit of a wall going here. Protoss will always wall versus Zerg unless they're doing some sort of a aggr super aggressive build. But in Brood War, normally you start with the Forge. You build your Forge, you, and then you build your Nexus, and you drop a cannon, and you're safe from basically anything Zerg can do. If you drop a Gateway first, you're looking to cause some pressure. And you'll send across one or two Zealots, right? And then you'll drop your Forge, and you'll have your wall. And you'll be able to play a macro game from there. But this definitely means that he wants to be the one applying pressure. Worst here is going to take control of the game from the start. And he comes across the map and gets the first scout. Oh, man. Pool goes down. Bzz, bzz, bzz. Try and harass the drones. Look at him. Get him. Probes beat drones in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Fun fact. Because this game is broken. <laughs> no. Because Protoss is too good. That's why. Yeah, here comes the first Zealot. Now, a probe and a Zealot combined do a fair amount of DPS, actually. And the probe adds just that little bit, and it can also just fire around the Zealot. Because range is a weird thing in this game. Oh, look at these moving shots. Doesn't stop moving, just keeps shooting. We got a loot and scoop. Alright, three sets of lings coming on up here. That's a very aggressive amount of lings. Especially considering you didn't go since you dropped the later pool. Huh. We're gonna go take this natural. Interesting. All right. The link's checking around for everything. There, ooh. 
Four lings beat one zealot. Six lings definitely beat a zealot. Oh, Mr. Probe, you don't want to be part of this. Yeah, you see, normally you send out zealot number two, but it's cross spawn and you see this many lings. So he's just left them at home. Finished up his wall, dropped his natural. And overall, it's time to macro. Zealot's gonna live down here for a little bit. Create some chaos if if Seraph ever goes to take this base, worse than we able to just cause some problems here. Double sunken. He's really worried about the potential of a two gate here. So instead of doing this nice little wall thing, you just drop two gates in your main, you just rally zealots across the map. Uh it's Protoss things, guys. Protoss things. You gotta remember. We're thinking like Protoss players here. And so, yeah, I think that's what his read on this was. Which is why he's got so many Lings. And the Sunken. Alright, Zealot Man coming up here. Once Creep Colony coming on up here. So you have to make a Creep Colony. And then turn it into a Sunken. And when it turns into a Sunken from a Creep Colony. Creep Colony has 400 health. It loses 100 health. So if you can get this down to 100 health before it finishes, it'll go down to 1 health. Oh, here come the boys. Ready? Yeah, it goes from 161 to 61. Oh, here come the boys. The boys are here. Five zealots on your sunken. Oh, it's not a good time. Oh, the lings are coming in, but look at that micro. We pull back that zealot. He gets a couple extra shots off. Yeah, this is not good. We're just dropping panic sunkins everywhere. Oh, if we target this one. Oh, target this one. Yeah, look at that. We lose our lings. We lose two sunkins. But you know what? We're not dead. Base is still alive. Cannons have infinite range. Which... It might sound funny, but it's actually kind of true. There is a bug where cannons can fire infinitely far. It's, it's actually kind of hilarious. Because Protoss. Spore coming on up here. I like that. We have no anti-air. We know Corsairs are coming. Corsairs are like the phoenixes of Brood War. Except their whole job is actually just killing overlords. Like, imagine if, like, the thing you do to me, Monazurg, with phoenixes was it's dedicated job yeah so that's what these things are and he realizes oh I have nothing to stop that so he's gonna build a spore colony which is like a spore crawler except in this game there's static defense not static but I can get up and move them when I want defense yeah we're memeing on Starcraft 2 a little bit guys since we got a nice little Starcraft 2 raid <laughs> I think both games are great. I love both games. I genuinely do enjoy both games. But, you know, we got to meme a little bit. Robo coming on up here. Um, totally in vision of this Overlord, by the way. Overlord goes pop. Legs coming on up here. So this is not charge. It's just a general speed buff. They don't run at you like at the end. But, you know, they, they just run a little bit quicker. All right. There it is. That overlord finally going to get got. All right. So, Spore Colony coming on up here as well. Yeah, and look at this. 35 out of 27, baby. I love it. You can, so, oh, fun fact, hatcheries provide one supply. So, if we click on a hatchery here, control provided, one. You can genuinely get someone down to, like, three, 34 out of three. If you can just come in here and all of these real quick, he'll be down to one, two, three, four, five, six supplies. So, 37 out of six. It is a thing, and it's the worst. 
it's truly the worst. Corsairs deal splash damage too. So if you get on top of this clump, mm -mm, mm -mm. it's not good. All right, Link's going cross. We're getting reverse, guys. We saw these in the last matchup. We're seeing them again. You know why? Because they're good. Temple Archives coming on up here. We're going to get some dank Templar and some high Templar. All right, we finally got Hydra production starting. Groove Spines coming here. The Hydra is your core unit, of course, against Protoss. It's like, well, it's like the Hydra, <laughs> except it's good. <laughs> it's actually really good. The Hydras are really good in this game. One supply, hatchery tech. This is what Hydras should be in StarCraft 2. Except Blizzard's a bunch of cowards. They're like, no, we can't let the Hydra be good again. That was way too good. All right, Overlord Speed finishes. Now look at him zoom. When, when you see this many Corsairs, one, they should be getting plus one. Worst is absolutely missing out here by not getting plus one. Oh, oh, that's a lot of zealots. What is it, a dozen zealots? Yeah. And two reavers. Oh, come on. He's trying to chip away at the sunkens here. The Hydra's doing their job. All right, here we go. From the back. The flank. The flank. The overlords come in here, and they're just going to die. They don't really add anything to this. Oh, no. We don't have enough for the proper flank. The Zealots, man, with plus one in speed, they don't mess around. Yeah. This base is absolutely toast. This reaver push is actually doing work. Blonk. Yeah, and at this point, we have reinforcing zealots coming here. We send it all. Oh, we're going to send everything we got across. Ooh, free high Templar. Free Templar. Get him. No, okay. 69 energy. Nice. Oh, all the drones dying. Oh, yes. My favorite part is when Protoss flies right over my Hydras. All right, guys. You ready to see how good Storm could be? Oh, Storm good unit. Where's the other Storm? Right in here. Come on, right here. Yeah. Look at these Hydras. Oh, it even killed an Overlord. God, Storm too good. All right, Zealot's going to come in from the flank here. We're still dealing with the cannons, let alone anything else. Yeah, there's not a lot here. Oh, dank Templars. They're trying. 1-1 one, one dank Templars. But we do have Overlords here, so they're not going to be as good as they should be. That's fine. We have regular visible Zealots, and they are good enough. Oh, he's really worried. He's got to kill the map egg. <laughs> GG is called. Seraf taps out and worst takes game. Number one. GG. <laughs> All right, guys. Protoss feeling good today. Guys, is, is Protoss just the good brace? Is Protoss truly better? Is that what they've been telling me all along? All right, guys, let me get that scoreboard updated here real quick. All right. All right, I also have to answer this message. There we are. Everyone's telling me we're all talking about Home Story Cup plans. Guys, I'm going to be at Home Story Cup in Germany. I just need to buy my flight. I've already got my ticket and my B&B, &B, and I just got to get my flights, and I was going to do them. Wednesday and then work was long and then Thursday and work was long and then Friday oh yeah admittedly last night I sat around a fire and got drunk but but it's fine because I'm gonna get them tonight because <laughs> I do have the money I just literally had to sit down and buy them <laughs> so we're gonna be at home story cup baby won't miss it for the world All right, spawning here in the top right-hand side. 
with the pink drones. Give it up for Serif. Down a point. Bottom left hand side with the green probe. Give it up for Worst. All right, guys. This is another four player map, Paradiso. Paradiso? Par Paradiso is what I call it, but I also know that that's wronger than wrong, which is mostly why I stick with it. So, four player map, what are we gonna do here? Anything crazy, anything fun? Mm. Eh. This map's not really great for crazy strategies, but it is good for a fun game. Like, Nice macro fun game, I think. But then again, it's worse than Syrup. If anyone's going to find a way to do something crazy here, it's these two guys. All right. Is that another gateway? Yeah, it is. All right. So we are doing gate first, and... This is something I was going to explain last game, and I just didn't, so I'm going to explain it this game. What this probe is doing right now is checking for the Overlord. So, when you send the Overlord out, you see how it's right here in this base right now? If, if Seraph had spawned down here, he would have sent his Overlord this way, and the probe would have seen it and known exactly, oh, you're down in this base. Probe does not see it, so he skips checking this corner. It's going to immediately cross scout. This is one of those like high level mind game things you can do where you're just like, oh, I don't need to check every base. I just need to check that you're not, be like your overlord's not here because then I know that you're not in this base. All right, yeah, we come up here, we see, all right, you've got splings. So this is gonna be a nine pool speed, guys. So you delay your overlord a little bit, you drop your spawning pool on nine. And you also drop your gas. You mine up 104 gas. And then you get link speed. It's a very simple build. It works very well. And this is usually why you go for it first. <laughs> Alright. So at this point though, Syrup doesn't know where worst is. So as you can see, they're going to be running over here. Sadly, that's the wrong way. Get here, you see there's no wall, and you go, okay. If you know the magic well enough, you know there's supposed to be a wall. Let's head down south. Because the overlord's in this base, so you know he's not here. Process of elimination. Two zealots, but no cannons, which means you can just start hammering away at the gateway. And this is where we're going to start dancing. Is Seraph going to go for it? Now he's coming back to deal with his pylon. He wants to take his natural. Now obviously, you want to drop your natural at 300 minerals, which is how much a hatchery costs. And it's currently at 500 minerals. So now, what you want to do with these things, you, you start hitting the gateway like right here. And then the zealots come out, and you try and wrap around and catch the zealots. And then they back off, and you back off. And you keep poking at this until a cannon goes down. Uh, zealots are moving out. That's... A uh, dozen speedlings. Uh, Seraph backs up for a moment. Unsure if he wants to take that fight. That allows the zealots to get home. All right. Going to get our gas finally. Nexus is coming on up here. This cannon will stop. Roughly 85 lings on its own. <laughs> uh, cannons are just really good in this game. So, with a cannon and something in the gap here, mm, you're pretty safe. Oh my god, he's just going to link flood. He's taking double, two more hatcheries, so he has more larva to make more lings. Alright, you, you got to stop the scout. The scout sees more lings coming in, though. And worse is immediately like ding, 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 ding. Another cannon. We need to see like even a third cannon here. I wouldn't hate it. Yeah. Immediately he's like, oh, you're doing a Ling flood. And three cannons. So two cannons will one shot a Ling, right? A Ling has 35 health. Cannons do 20 damage. Two shots will kill it, right? 
And so three cannons here will absolutely just put hurting on these lings. Because they can't kill the zealots quickly. They can't kill the buildings quickly. Yeah, we're <laughs> looking good for our Protoss player here. Huh. All right, we're sending it. This is what happens when you A move also, by the way, is that your links just kind of do dumb things. Yeah, look at this. They're getting torn apart by these cannons. The Forge with 550 health, the Gateway 500, neither of them are dying. That was so many links. Oh, he even drops the second gateway to make sure that the walls still stand. GG. Oh. Poor Seraph. He really wanted it. And in the end, he does not get it. GG's. <laughs> oh. You hate to see it, don't you? Truly unfortunate for the boy. Yeah, GG's indeed. And it looks like... So, Worst... Worst started out in D rank. Alright? So, Worst started in one of the lower ranks. Right? So, StarCraft 2, probably the equivalent of starting... And this is going to piss a lot of people off. Because no matter where you say they start, everyone disagrees. I would say it's the equivalent of being a Platinum player. Alright? Started off in, like, Platinum League. And he is now an a rank player, which is essentially mid to high masters, right? Uh, mid masters, maybe. Yeah, somewhere around there. Somewhere in the masters leagues, right? And he's done this in, like, a year. He went from just, like, a dude. <laughs> now he's good. Oh, God, he's here. Never mind. Guys, I can't keep talking good about him. He's here. God, worse sucks, doesn't he? <laughs> God, isn't it worse trash? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, Jinjin. <laughs> Jinjin's already upset. He's like, oh, oh, oh I disagree with that. <laughs> All right. Make sure we mark those points accordingly. Man. So the thing is, Worst shows up only when he wins, and he's going to disappear again because he's obviously going to lose the next map because Zerg. And he's going to dip, and he's going to come back when he wins again. Players only show up when they win a map. They don't like to watch their own losses. And that, I have no idea the results, by the way. I'm just memeing on Worst. I mean, if it was BWCL, I would agree with that. This man does not lose in BWCL. He's more valuable to our team then Cyril is the Basilisk. <laughs> like, he just crushes. It's not even fair. And you know what the best part is? Is that Worst doesn't even have to go and do the military service. So he can keep winning for us. All right. Spawning here in the top, bottom left-hand side. Not the top. It's the bottom left-hand side. <laughs> With the teal probes. Give it up for the worst player ever. Quite literally. Top right, pink drones, guys. It's Seraph. He's a hero in his own way. Honestly, is uh, Seraph is a really cool dude to talk to as well. Like, obviously, Worst is here, and we've talked up, we've talked him up a bit. Now we got to talk up his opponent. You know, got to keep it unbiased casting. <laughs> Both these guys, super cool people, super good players too. By the way, don't let like the fact that it's 2-0 dissuade you of the fact that Seraph is actually really good at this game. It's just, so far, build order losses have <laughs> started stacking up. We're doing another nine pool against another gateway first on a two-player map. So now you know where they spawn. It's just straight across the map. Hey, Cookie. Nine pool speed. Let's go. So nine pool speed didn't win us last game. Will it get us this game? <laughs> Probes coming across. This map, by the way, has seen three different renditions throughout NSL 6, all of which were bad. <laughs> it was just like, which level of bad was it? So this bridge used to be blocked off with an egg in the middle, 
and then a patch of minerals like right about here. And basically what that meant was that small things like zerglings and workers and hydralisks and zealots could get through. But larger things like vultures and tanks and dragoons and lurkers could not. Which basically meant your mid-game army, half of it would go through here. I'm a zerg player, so half of my mid-game army would go through here. And the other half would just kind of circle here as it tried to path around. And it's like, oh, I don't know what to do. We can't get across the bridge. So in this final version, everything was removed. The bridges are wide open. The problem with that is that now in your early, like the early to mid game, you can just send things across and the rush distance is super short because of it. The whole point of blocking the bridges was that it made the rush distance a little bit longer because they had to go up and around, right? You can't really see it, but it's basically you go up and then up and then you're over here. But you don't have to do that now. So there's no, <laughs> there's no winning on this map. And I feel bad because I do try and enjoy every map that we play. But, like, the more I've casted on this map, the more I've played this map, the more I'm like, I just, I just don't. <laughs> Hydroden coming on up here. Nice. So he goes nine pool. Speed. As a diversion, maybe? To confuse um, Worst? You got the cannon coming. Worst hasn't seen the Lings yet, and he's a little confused, so he drops the safety cannon. But he also wants to move out because if it is just a fake, well, you know, maybe the Zealots can get some work done. Ten Lings versus three Zealots. Uh, with a little bit of micro, it's doable. But also, Worst should look at this and go, uh, maybe not. No, uh, he's going to take the fight, and that's not a great idea. Well, the bridge is actually working like a really efficient choke point, except the part we can get around that zealot. Oh, no. Oh, no. You're not supposed to lose those. Those are important. What are you... Mr. Drone, what are you doing? All right, Mr. Hydra, you good? Just... You know in the, uh, like the 80s movies where you'd slide across the hood of the car? The Hydra just did that, but across the hatchery. He was like... Nyeom. All right, natural finishes up here for worst. He even grabs the probes and tells them to come back. Look at that. The man cares about his workers. He's like, no, 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 you don't have to walk that far. Don't worry, guys. All right, we got some hydras here. We are hiding them. He doesn't want worst to know yet what's coming. The two hatch hydra, not. It's not considered the greatest build, but it, if it catches them off guard, this will absolutely get some damage done. And I, but we're on 10 drones, guys. 10 drones to 25. And in Brood War, you don't need a lot of drones. It's not like going up to 100 drones like you do in StarCraft 2. You genuinely only need on two bases. I mean, if you're actually looking for saturation. Oh, no. Yep, now we got to send it. Now we've got to send it. The scout got in. We got to go. You, you still want like one drone per patch, basically, right? So now we have to get work done here. We have to cut down worst economy. Or we're just super far behind. Also, by the way, there's a pair of eyes in here. I don't know if that was ever intentional or not, but... This map has a lot of fun little details and doodads that you can point out. A lot of history in the map, too. Alright. Uh, I don't like diving this. You should try and tear down the gateways first. The gate <laughs> Hello, Dragoon? Oh, three cannons. Yeah, you're not winning that. Seraph knows there's no way he's getting anything done here. G G. Guys, maybe Worst is kind of good at the game. I think Worst might, and I I, I want to stress this enough. He might be good at the game. It might know what he's doing, just a little bit, not a lot, but just a little bit. <laughs> Thank you for the follows, by the way. Um, that's a 
D in a lot of numbers, or at least what it translates to. And then Goddeth Dark. Thank you. <laughs> this was the old version of Worst. What, is he worse now? <laughs> is he finally just downhill? <laughs> I'm sure MG and um, the likes are hoping for that. MG and AP and CWT, they're all hoping for the day Worst falls off. <laughs> no more gate fast expand. <laughs> What's wrong with gate fast expand? I mean, besides the fact that it dies to half the things Zerg does, but like, what's wrong with it? Just die to my four pool, all right? <laughs> all right, guys, we have game four coming on up here. So let's get right on into it. It is funny to see where the meta was a year. Cookie, this was a year ago, right? Give or take. Because this was like last summer, right? It was round of 16. You would know. You're smart. I'm not smart. Spawning here in the top left-hand side of Neo Rush Hour. Guys, with the green probes, give it up for worst. Guy thinks he's gotten better sense, but I don't know. <laughs> Bottom left-hand side, guys. It's Seraph with the pink drones. You'll love to see it, guys. I know we've talked, we just memed about it for a little bit, but it is, in fact, the four pool. The truly the oldest build. This is actually the oldest StarCraft build. Because you went, oh, I start with four workers. What if I build a spawning pool immediately? And that's when they went, well, maybe the spawning pool should cost a little bit more than 150 minerals. But. All right, guys. So the fun fact about this build is that with even with three drones, you actually make just enough money to continuously produce links. And if you build the fourth drone, it just mines enough to that way you still have 150 minerals. The four pool is truly the perfect build. It just works. It. I don't know why it's so well. I don't know why it works so well, but it, it just does. All right, as long as we send these links straight up, which we should, you should always send it to the base that your overlord's not going to. If your overlord's going over here, you want to send your links up because you want to be scouting two bases at once. So yeah, we'll send them up here. One zealot, four links beat one zealot. We have six links. So guys, is it happening? Guys, I think it's happening. This probe doesn't quite know where to go. Oh, it's free real estate. It's free real estate. Punch, 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 punch. Now, if worse was a, if worse was a gentleman, right? What you do here is you just instant GG, right? If you if you are truly a decent person, yeah, you just instant GG as a Protoss here. Oh, we're trying to go for the zealot. I don't know if that's the play. I don't think that was the play. The probes are fighting back. Look at these guys. They got kills for days. GG. Congratulations. Probes, man, are built different. What a bang to end it on, guys. A four pool to finish out the series. Damn. And it didn't work. Remember when I said just die to the four pool? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm switching the scene back real quick because this is hilarious. <laughs> APM doesn't matter, guys. But it is hilarious to point out that a four pool, he had 52 APM. <laughs> Worst is over here slamming on his keyboard and Seraph's like, heh, click. A move. All right. I just thought that was hilarious. But that is, in fact, all I've got because I don't feel good. Like, I... I'm genuinely just not feeling super hot. 
So we're going to go ahead and find someone to show some love to. And yeah. Uh, who do we got online? Is there anyone interesting? Uh, what do we got here? Oh, Pixel Dude, thank you for the follow. Um, What do we got here? Oh, everyone's streaming BSL. <laughs> All the streams are BSL. <laughs> uh, oh, the check land. Is the check land happening right now? Oh, it is. Oh, my God, guys, there's a land happening right now. We're raiding them for sure. These guys are playing live StarCraft together. Oh, baby. This, this is what the world needs more of, guys. Everyone all aboard. We're showing these guys some love. They're from, well, CZ slash SK. I'll admit, I don't know my country codes as well as I should. But I, I think that these guys are, I think they're checking. I think they're doing some fun things. Uh, striker versus um, censured. Okay, yeah. Guys, thank you all for hanging out. Thank you all for watching a little bit of Brood War. And make sure you show some love to Next in Line, guys. Until next time, have a great day. Keep being awesome.